Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today we're going to be learning the basics of Python. So if you haven't coded before then this is where you'll start your coding journey. We're just going to touch upon some basic maths operations in Python just to get you familiar with how Python works. So I'm going to get my glasses as always and move you onto the screen. Okay, so we're on my desktop here and we're just going to load PyCharm, which again is here. Now, something I noticed when I was doing the installation, because this is, this is a new laptop, is just checking, and this is just something I'm going to say to everyone, is just checking that you are using Python 3.8. I have done a previous video just to check that your setup is in Python 3.8 and what to do if it's not. So what you want to do is you want to go to PyCharm Preferences, go into Project PyCharm, click Python interpreter and then you want to just check here that it says Python 3.8. When I started up my laptop um, earlier today it said it was in Python 2.7 which obviously we don't want because we want it to be in the interpreter that is 3.8 so the latest version of Python. As you can see here it was in this one and I've done a video on my channel just to show you how to get it into 3.8 if you are if you happen to be in 2.7. So that's just a little side note because I don't want you to start coding in, in Python 2 without realising. So we're going to jump straight in. Um, this is the setup that I had before, just file 1 and file 2. I'm just going to, for the sake of this video, just delete these and we're going to set up a brand new file. And also for the sake of this video, I'm just going to delete these three from this folder because we don't need them anymore. I'm just going to click delete and OK, I've deleted them. So now we're just going to open a brand new Python file. So click new and then we'll click Python file here and we're just going to call it basic Python just because that's what we're doing today. Basic Python. Okay, so what you'll see here is obviously as I explained earlier, this is the file that you've now opened. It's a Python file because it says it says .py uh, and this is just the folder that we've created here, PyCharm, which again you can see here. So firstly, I'm just going to get you used to Python, kind of what things that you can start typing into Python and, and just give you a, a basic overview of, of little things that you can do in Python to get you familiar with, with how to use the programming language. So the first thing I'm going to introduce you to is maths operations. Don't worry if you're not, you know, if you don't have a strong maths background, it's okay. These are going to be very, very simple. Just addition, subtraction, division, very simple. And obviously because Python works technically as a, as a calculator, you don't need to worry about calculating these sums. So I'm just going to start by saying that in Python, the way that the Python file works is if you were to type in, say, 1 plus 3 into this file. Now you'll notice that we do get a bit of an error up here. One warning, one week warning. And this is what's good about PyCharm is that you get these little errors if, if your code is not sufficient, if things don't work. And usually they'll go red when something just will not work at all. Now I'm just going to show you what happens if you were to run this Python file. So we're just going to go up here and there's this green triangle. Almost looks like a go button. Now what you'll notice is when I hover over it, it says run main. And what main was, you see here it says main. Now main was that Python file that we had originally in here that I subsequently deleted. So essentially if I was to run this now, it would run the main file. But obviously we don't want it to run the main file, we want it to run this basic Python file. So the way that you're going to specif specify which Python file you want it to run is by going up here, clicking the run button, and then here you have the option to run the main Python file, but obviously we don't want to because we don't we don't want to we haven't coded anything in, in the main file. You're gonna go down here to run with the three dots and click run. Now this pops up and you'll see here it says basic Python. So obviously we want to run the basic Python file. So if we if we click basic Python now, you've noticed that it says basic Python up here, so it's running that's the file that it will run again if I click that. And this pops up down here and it says here process finished with exit code zero. So what you'll notice is it actually has run this Python file and nothing's come up. And I'll tell you why that is. So Python goes through this file and it's looking for commands. And obviously in here we have just simply put one plus three. Now you may think, well, should that not produce four? And the answer to that is no. 
because Python will go through a file and it needs some form of command or function to execute something that you want it to produce. So here we're, we're wanting it to produce one plus three. And the way that you overcome that is by putting a print with brackets around the one plus three. So now what will happen is when I run this basic Python, we want to make sure that it says basic Python at the top and we click run here, we get four. So again, I could do one plus 10, click run and it comes up with 11. So there you go, there, there, if you've done that, that's your first bit of Python code. And essentially the print command will come in handy throughout your coding journey. It's basically just telling Python to print whatever is in this bracket. So if you notice, if I was to get rid of the bracket here, oh, we've got red, we've got red and a big error. So if I was to click run, it says syntax error. And what syntax error means is there's some form of error within your code. So you've written something that's wrong. So you need to always make sure that your brackets are closed. And a nice thing about PyCharm is that when you close the bracket, the bracket that corresponds to the one you've closed highlights in yellow, which is quite, is quite nice, especially if you've got a few brackets within a term. So again, we click run, run and it produces 11. So that's the principle behind printing numbers, printing operations. Again, we can change this to star. So that's multiplication and we get 10. You could do divide. Now divide is just a forward slash and we get 0 0.1 or we could do subtract and we get minus nine. So if you want to, you can just have a play around with this. You can produce loads of different calculations. Say if you wanted to, oh, I don't know, it, you know, in your head, someone asked you to do 180 uh, multiplied by 1023. You know, I'm sure there's some mathematicians out there that can do that on the top of the head, but we're just going to click run in Python. And there we go. You get a really big number. And that's what Python is great for, is that you can ask it to perform these really complicated mathematical equations. Obviously, they do get a little bit more complicated than just timesing. And Python can do it within a split second. You know, I can change that to four and just watch how quick it produces it down here. Sometimes Python has helped me um, throughout uh, my maths degree because it's helped me just kind of have it in the background better than a calculator because it, it can perform some pretty good calculations, pretty amazing calculations really. So that's the principle behind the print button. Now what I'm just going to show you is that in the print button you can have different Python types. And what I mean by that is if, say you don't want numbers, say you want a phrase, and the classic Python phrase that I'm sure if, if you've done a bit of Python before, you will know it's hello world. Now, if you were to write an, a letter, a, a phrase or, or a letter into the print command, you must have the quotation marks around them. So we're just going to click run. And here we go. It says print hello world. Now notice what happens if I was to get rid of those. Big red. Again, syntax error. And what that means is Python will read this and because there's no quotation marks, it will think that we are calling a variable. And what I mean by a variable is if you remember from GCSE maths or any type of maths, you can do something as simple as x equals two. Now what this does is Python will store any time you choose an x and store it as a two. So let's say I was to just delete this for a second and bring this down here. And let's say we were to say hello equals two. And I was just going to get rid of the world just to make things a little bit easier. So if I now run this file, two pops up. And that's essentially saying that what I'm doing in Python is I'm assigning hello, the variable hello to the number two. So then when Python is asked to print hello, it will know that the hello is assigned as two and subsequently produce two. You could change this to 15 and click go, 15 pops up. And again, you can change it to an absolute crazy number, just type in a random number, click go, and it there produces it. So this is really handy when you're performing really big calculations because you might know that a set variable is a set number and then you need to manipulate data especially in data analysis it's perfect and that means that you can assign numbers to variables and that's what's perfect in python
Now, a thing to say with this is, let's just say hello is 15. Now, Python runs by going in order. So if I was to just pop this down here, and we're just going to cut the print hello, and we're gonna move it above the assigned hello here. Now, you notice there's a red mark. And this is what's great, again, in, in PyCharm is that you will get red marks if, if something is wrong with your code, and that's perfect, because it allows you to, to pick up on it straight away. So if I was to click run, we come up with the error that says name hello is not defined. And what that means is we have not assigned hello before we decide to print. So Python will run this file and the first line it comes to is the print hello. And because there's no previous hello assignment, it comes up with this. So what's really worth noting in Python is that you must assign a variable before you choose to print it. So I could do something crazy like, let's say, we'll just do x equals 15 star 3. Not really that crazy, but you know, it's, it's forming a calculation. So we all know that x, if x is 15 times 3, then we get 45. Obviously, if you, don't, if you don't know that, then Python will tell you that right now as I click run. So we're, we're asking Python to print this x. There we go, 45. So that's just kind of a bit of an overview of how you can assign variables and then recall them. I think it's perfect in Python because you can just do some absolutely crazy calculations. You know, like I said, I can, you can go like this, uh, 15 times whatever number this is, click run, and within a tiny portion of a second, Python produces it. Obviously, a thing to say is that as you increase the complexity of a variable or of a function or of a command python will take longer to run and that's just because it's having to process all of this information but the fact that it can do that within a split second is absolutely phenomenal and that's why i love it so much because of the applications it has towards maths now as i mentioned earlier um you can say you know you, you don't just have to have one print statement so i could say well let's have y equals to oh i don't know 200 yeah, 200, we'll go with 200. You can also just type in print y. Now, a thing that I'll mention is you know that print is a command because it has turned purple. Or it might be different colour in your case. It depends on how, how you set up, set up Python. PyCharm in this case. So I'll click run, and here we go, we have two. Which is great. Or you can put a comma in there and click y. And we'll just get rid of this run and there we go we have them next to each other it completely depends if you would prefer to see them you know following each other then maybe this way is much better because instead in a row it's, it's in um, it's in a column which you know it, it completely depends on personal preference and so you can just have a play around with with what you want to do but the premise of this video is just to understand the basic concept of assigning a variable say x and then being able to recall that variable because that being able to grasp how to recall variables and assign variables is probably one of the most important things you can do in python because you will use it continually throughout your python career even in things that you don't expect you will you will use it now a thing i'm just going to say is say you are making a python file and you're listening along to this video and you're thinking oh i, I want to write down how you know what i'm doing right now and, and what things mean so say i'm talking and you want to write down a specific thing i've said you might think oh well, i could just you know write it here and say um maybe we'll just do it below this print y and that you can say um this this will print the variable y so obviously this is your little note but what you'll notice is it comes up with red and again with the whole problem we had before with the hello world without in the in quotations it thinks python will read this and think that this is a variable so this is why it'll go red and i think if you hover over it unresolved reference d and again here unresolved reference this so the way that you comment in python is you just put a hashtag so you just do a hashtag and what you'll notice is this makes it gray now if i run this python file nothing appears in the python code and what that means is you can comment as much as you like in your python files you just have to make sure that there's a ha there's a hashtag and again say 
I write something here and it ends up going off the page over here and then I click enter, you'll notice there isn't another hashtag. So you'll just have to do another hashtag and, and write whatever you want to write in here. So this will print the variable y and then we can just say here, this will print the variable x. And at the top of here we can say, this is assigning the variables x and y. And you can even do it next to it as well. So you can do it here and say, um, you know, x is 15 multiplied by three. And you can say that equals 45. It depends, you can write anything you want in your Python file and that's why I love love python so much is that you can it's so easy to just put a little hashtag and, and add a little comment i know for my internship this summer it was just comments everywhere just to explain to, the, to my supervisor what what thought process i was doing now here we have two weak warnings and it says at least two spaces before the incline comment and and what this is space what this is saying is it would like at least two spaces before the incline comment so we're just going to add another com space on there and then this disappears so what I love about PyCharm is it does tell you, you know, exactly what's wrong here. It says we, uh, blank line at the end of a file. And what that means is I've added loads of spaces down here. That was more just so I could scroll down a little bit if I wanted to. But again, it, it's just the way that it's kind of almost like a Word document. It tells you what is correct and syntax and things like that. So that's great because it means that your code is also written very nicely as well. So that's the basic premise behind, you know, commenting, assigning variables and then printing them. I'm just going to move on to a little bit more complex again here we popped up with a with a problem that's because i've added some extra lines but i'm just going to minimize this and just do it the way that um the way that i see fit just so you can see what what i'm doing so we're going to move on to something more complex so it's not too complex it's not very complex at all but it's complex in the sense that it's just going to open up a new area of python to you so more complex math so let's say we have a equals two. So we're assigning a to equal two, as we did up here. And it's also worth noting that if I was to say this is x, if I was to perform an operation with x down here, Python would take this value of x and not this value of x, because this value of x is the last line it will read. Just like if I was to write x equals zero, it will take this value of x over this value of x just because that is the last assigned variable of x it has read. So just a bit of advice, I would avoid assigning variables the same letter or the same phrase. You know, you can write number equals two. It doesn't have to be a letter, it can be anything you want. It can be, um, you know, it could be my, oh, my number is this. Now what, what I must say is that you can't just put a space because that's an error so i always use underscores just because it's a little bit nicer than um than writing it you know my number is this it, it just doesn't really look too nice so we're not going to write my number is this we're just going to assign it to number just to show you that you can write words assign numbers to words as variables so we have number equals two now let's say I want to perform the square root of two. In fact, I'm just gonna make things a little bit easier for you and just say this is four because four is a square root, we know that. So let's say we want to perform the square root of this number. Now one way you could do that is by just saying, well, let's print our number. And if you remember from, I think it's GCC Maths, how you perform a square root is you would just take the power. Now power in Python is double star, and then it would be 0 0.5. Now don't worry if you don't know this is how a square root works. This is just kind of to show you that this is one way of doing it. It's very complex, but I'll show you the very easy way after this. So we're just gonna run the, the, the Python file. And here it says two. So obviously it's running the, the previous two that we've asked it to do because it's, we've still got print in here. If I was to comment these out and click run, we'd only get this one because that's the only one we've assigned. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to keep them commented out. So what you'll notice is this is a bit of a long way to find the square root. And you might be thinking, is there not just a way that I can write square root and it will work? Well, I'll show you what happens if I was to do that. I'm going to keep that in 
and just say, we're just going to put a hashtag and say, um, this is one way of performing a square root. And then I'm going to just put quite complex. Now, I'm now going to say alternative way to perform a square root. Okay. So, you might think, well, why can't I just put print and then, you know, square root four? Or number in this case, because we've assigned number. Now, what I'm first going to say is this will never work. And that's because Python doesn't like writing square root like that. The way that you will write square root in Python is by doing SQRT. Now, if you perform a lot of square roots, then this will be ingrained in your memory. You might have to look it up to remember or watch this video again to remember. You might think, well, is, is that not going to work? And the answer is no. The first problem, obviously, we have an error up here and it's saying one error. And if you click on this error, it's telling you unresolved reference square root. And what's that saying is square root is not defined in this instance. So if I was to run this Python file here, it tells me that name square root is not defined. Now. In Python, Python has these things called packages. Now in these packages, there are functions. Now function in Python, very generically, does something specific and gives an output. Just like if you remember from maths, if you have y equals x, then for each x value, y will also equal the x value. Or you can have a function like y equals x squared. It's just a function that will give a desired output. Python has these packages with these functions in. And Python actually has a package called math. Again, it's American. So if you obviously if you're watching from England, remember it's math and not maths. You'll notice that a lot, um, especially when you start moving on to colours. Colour is spelt without the U. Python has this package called math. And in that package, there are tons and tons of functions, mathematical functions. And it just so happens that square root is one of those. Now you might think, well, how do I get a package into Python? You know, can I, can I do it straight away? It's telling me that I can't perform a square root. And the way that you overcome that is by importing these packages. Now in PyCharm, the math package is already installed. So you, you don't need to do an extra, you know, going up here and, and installing it through that way. It's already installed, but you just have to recall it in your function. And what I mean by that is at the top of your Python file, you're just going to drop this down. And you're going to write from math and what that's saying is from the math module we're going to import square root there we go there we are it comes up with square root just double click it and notice there's no errors it's absolutely fine it's it's saying that in this package the math package we're going to import the function square root now the function square root will give you the square root of any number you put in it so we've done this and notice that the square root at the bottom is no longer red. So watch what happens when I run my Python file. Here we are, two. So we have the print from this first one we did here, two, and print from this number here, which is two. And again, you know, we can change this to, oh, nine. Let's be adventurous, go nine and click run. And you'll notice that it turns to three because the square root of nine is three. Again, if assigning variables is complex to you, you can simply just get rid of this. You can just put a square root of nine in here or, or anything, you know, and it doesn't just happen, it doesn't just work for numbers that are square roots. So I can put a square root of 10 and click run and it comes up with this crazy, crazy long number, which just so happens to be the square root of 10. So what this, what I'm just trying to teach you here is that instead of having to mess around writing this, you can simply just right a square root and this is the same for anything so if you are familiar with factorials it doesn't matter if you aren't this is just to show you that factorials and, and other sort of packages are in, involved so a factorial again if you were to say well i'm just gonna put this in the hashtags five factorial and factorial is represented with an exclamation mark now that equals five times four times three times two times one and that's what factor that's the definition of a factorial for this specific factorial. Again, don't worry if you don't know this. If you do know what factorials are, then then perfect. And what I'm just going to show you is instead of me saying, well, can we just print five times four times three times two 
times one. Obviously that's even just five numbers, that's a bit of a, a mouthful to write. You could just write print factorial fat. Now what you'll notice is we have an error and that's because at the top of here, we haven't imported the factorial. So again, we can just put from math import factorial. And then when we go to the bottom, there's no error. So we're just gonna run this Python file. And here we go. It's run both of these, but obviously you can see that this is a much quicker way, especially if you were to do something crazy like, so we'll just do factorial 50 and see how long, and look at that. You know, imagine trying to write out 50 times 49 times 48 times 47. It would take you forever. Python does it within a split second. And that is an incredible number. So that's just saying that if you want to perform some crazy mathematical calculations, then importing it through the math package is perfect. Another thing to say is, you know, you might have thought, well, is it not fact? Or, you know, you know, like in square root, it was it was. Um, shortened what's worth noting is if you say want to perform a specific function that's in a math package just go onto google and just type in math uh, package python and it will give you a list of all of the different things you can do within that so that's kind of the task for the end of this video is just go explore see what other crazy things you can do you can do things like exponentials as well in, in this math package but what's rem what's worth remembering is just making sure that you import it up here because otherwise your code won't work and also making sure that if you're assigning variables here, if you were to reassign that variable later on, it will recall the latest version. And, you know, just do a bit of practice on these. It, it takes, it take, it's so easy to just pick up on. You just need to keep practicing and practicing. But this video is just basically a general overview of, of how you can assign variables, how you can print variables, how you can do some pretty cool mathematical calculations in in a split second and then also just importing math modules to perform slightly more complicated equations and obviously the essence of, of importing these functions is that we're importing them because they are not specifically built into python we must we must install them first before we can we can do that we must install and import them but that's the end of the video i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please like subscribe and comment and i will see you all in the next video